back to everyone. Hello. This is Mike Check 95 along with my cohorts. Krieger Martin 1. And Orphan Joker. And we're picking up on a series that I've been wanting to review for quite some time. This is going to be a fun one for Krieger. <laughs> and it's new for Joker. Paranormal yes. activity next of kin. No, we're not doing that. <sighs> we have started our Head grand up. series review of The Terminator. And we started with The Terminator. <laughs> Since... Krieger's phone was on the verge of death before this began. And his brain began. is incapable of um, focusing. I have decided to pick up some trivia and some the numbers for uh, this film. So instead of the, the Krieger numbers, it's the mic check numbers on this episode. Let's start with the budget and the box office. The budget of this film was $6.4 million. And the box office backed $78.3 million. So they made quite a bit of money. Uh, this is where I think Krieger's going to have a cow. Audience rate this movie an 8.9 out of 10. Woo! And critics rate this film a 10 out of 10. What? I think those are good numbers. Please. I don't think that the, the reviews are off much. This is a... Classic. It has been a uh, extremely long time since I watched this. So much so that I completely forgot everything about it um, until about halfway through the movie. Then I slowly started to remember everything. There was literally one point in the movie throughout the whole movie that I was like, "That's bad." And the first time he took out his eye thing, but the given its time, it was fantastic. Um, I think that this is it. Like I said, this spanned a big series afterwards. It's, a, it's another one of those that's a cult classic. For its time, it was a big game changer. Um, so, uh, 10 out of 10. That's one of the films that gets a 10. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's, no. that's a, no. that, that surprised me. No, it's not one that, that makes you think a lot. But, <laughs> but even the plot itself is really good. Oh, yeah. On it, for its time. So, um, yeah, it's one of those... We just got done watching Alien and Predator, and that was one that's a classic, but, like, there's a shit ton of flaws, and it's awful. But this is one that's, like, solid mm -hmm. all around. My toyn. There's not going to be science time with Josh in this movie. There wasn't... Uh, there's not much to talk about. It's pretty much self-explanatory with yeah. the science. <laughs> they, they, there wasn't anything that I saw that was bad. I mean, outside of... I don't think you can make a bomb out of the chemicals that they put there. And I'm not going to Google it, because I don't want to be followed by the FBI. So, we're just going to assume that you can't, because I don't think you can. Fuck you, asshole. This movie, I liked. It satisfies my 80s noir, dark film. It hits all the buttons. It's got some cool music. It's got 80s fashion. It's got the dark themes. It's dark throughout most of the movie, and everything's edgy, and there's robots attacking. This movie is the start of something. And so, them going back, going from the future to the past... Um, having all these linked connections, uh, having robots attack everybody, uh, you know, this is both 80s style, but this is also new. Um, we, in our day and age, we've been bombarded by this millions of times, people going back to the past, complicated, crazy things, because we've been exposed to all the Terminators and other movies like it, but this was new for the time, mm -hmm. and so that's fantastic. They didn't have a lot of the past. There wasn't necessarily a lot of going places. It was mostly tight scenes in close quarters. There was lots of blood. There was some cool gore, some CGI, well, uh, some puppetry, some animatronics, some, claymation. Some green screen, too. Some green screen. And it all looked really, really good for 80s. Like, I don't think there was anything that I wouldn't be... Like, if I saw it in a movie today... I would be upset, but, like, anything before uh, 95. Excellent. Yeah. I really liked the story. I think the acting was great. Uh, I liked... I, I obviously know things going into this, but I tried to picture it being somebody in the theater for the first time. The whole, we don't know who's killing who and why they're killing who they're killing and who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. And so you're just as terrified as she is running around with different things. I love the the goober cops. I know sometimes it's cheesy cops, but cheesy cops on purpose. It's like, oh, yeah, whatever, they're crazy. It's like, guys, you don't know what's going on. 
and then slowly watching the Terminator, seeing it rotting and people smelling it and understanding things and a little bit of the backstory, all of those things coming together made for an interesting plot, made for an interesting forward motion. Mm -hmm. And it it didn't stop. There wasn't anything dull. Even the quiet pause points uh, made sense. It, it didn't seem like a very long movie, but it was definitely a very intense movie, it's especially at the, the end. One of, it's the shortest one out of all of them from when I wrote, looked up on it. So it's Terminator it's, 3 is four hours long. Oh my god. It feels like four hours. <laughs> Oh. But we're not going to talk about Terminator 3 until we get to it. Until we get to it. This movie was great. I do want to watch it again. Uh, I don't want to watch it again right now, which is a 10. Uh, something I like immediately want to rewatch it as a 10 for me. I would recommend this to friends. If they haven't seen it, this movie would be an amazing movie in the theater um, for the first time back in the 80s not watching I mean, anything sometimes today sometimes they hold this film for like film festivals and people still go to it to watch it because it's just it's it's good yes. <laughs> uh, awesome movie so I'm going to give this a 9.45 not necessarily a 9.5 because it, it's really good but I've, I've I have some other movies that I I like more than this that I, I feel are closer to the 9.5 range. Uh, but this is a really good movie. Excellent movie. For first time, them pulling this idea out of what seems like nowhere. It has RoboCop feels. I really like the RoboCop series. And so it gets a 9.45 for me. I have quite a bit of trivia, but I'll try to run through it as fast as I can. The first few I wrote down as I was like watching the film before I actually started digging some trivia myself. Uh, Bill Paxton, the guy with the blue spiky hair in the movie, mm -hmm. is in is in this film, Aliens, the second Alien film, he's and Predator Two. He's in a lot of movies. He's in all three of these uh, big, uh, it's like sci-fi. It's like, game over, man. Um, <laughs> films that we've watched recently, so that's an interesting fun fact. For some reason, there has been an, I've learned recently that there's been like an ongoing argument for the last like several years for this film debating whether or not this is an action film or if this is a horror movie and i would say that you can argue that this is a horror movie and i was gonna say it is film. a sci-fi movie which could be it did categorized as a horror followed movie. by screams horror movie the, the, the bad guys never did dead he has one it's it's shot. it's like it's and as soon as they had sex boom there he comes and the guy who had sex got killed bare bones mm -hmm. i mean it's yeah it's it's a horror movie but it's got it had action elements in it too which is why it's confused to be an action only film it's sci-fi it's horror i would consider it as a horror movie would i throw it in october horror fest maybe like a last minute pitch in another actor who's been in another film or uh, Schwarzenegger. Besides here, well, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> duh. Uh, Michael Bean, who played Kyle Reese, has been in this film, and he was Corporal Hicks in Aliens. Oh. Um, also, this is James Cameron's second film he's ever directed, and Aliens was his third film right after this. Arnold had personally trained with guns for a month to pretty much learn how to hit fire, um, react like a machine, be ambidextrous, know how to reload and unload without actually looking at it. He actually did all that training blindfolded. Oh. James Camera did guerrilla filming to avoid asking permission for a lot of these scenes. In other words, he filmed illegally. <laughs> and there was one scene, the very last scene in the movie, where she's driving off in the desert. He almost didn't get to make it because the cops were almost like well, almost like busted him. For that it. looked super CGI though. Arnold Schwarzenegger remained to not have any connection with uh, Linda Hamilton or Michael during the filming that way that he would look terrifying as possibly can while they're actually shooting the scenes and whatnot. This film was actually postponed for nine months because at the same time as this film, Arnold was also filming Conan the Barbarian. Oh yeah! <laughs> there was an incident where on a lunch break, Arnold went to go get some food for lunch and before he could realize it, and it was immediately too late, he sat down and got food, still in Terminator makeup, machine-like showing face and, and all. One of the people that were considered for the role of the Terminator was O.J. Simpson, but it was turned down because he was considered too nice. Oh, I thought it was the other. This was uh. before the O.J. Simpson mm. uh, trial. Arnold Schwarzenegger was actually considered for the role of Kyle Reese at one point. 
Oh. Makes sense. Uh, the turn is right. I'm on the half of the sex with you, okay, pretty lady? <laughs> um, the I'll be back line, he says to the cop at the desk, was actually uh, improv. I'll be back. The puppetry of Arnold's face for that surgery scene took about six months. Like, the face itself took six months to make. Oh, I was like, like six months just, to shoot the just scene. Just to design that. It was um, good. Originally, Arnold had disliked this film because when they asked him what was going on, he's like, I don't know, I'm just shooting some shit movie while he's trying to do Conan the Barbarian. He has retracted that statement right after that, and now this is this is his all-time favorite film. As, as a hey, I'm shooting some shit movie where I didn't get to have sex with the lady, my bad guy. <laughs> An actor who turned down the role as the Terminator was Mel Gibson. Good. <laughs> he's too nice. <laughs> Uh, Lance Hendrickson, or the guy who played Bishop in Aliens, uh, is also in this film as one of the cops. One Great. of the influences that James Cameron had for this film was from The Road Warrior, or Mad Max 2. Yeah. I felt Escape from New York. <laughs> Escape from... Uh, another yeah. another actor was good. who was, was also good. considered for the role as Terminator, which is funny because this actor has worked with Arnold on several different movies and also has worked with James Cameron with several different movies, was Sylvester Stallone as the Terminator. And there were two other people considered for the role of Kyle Reese, but they were obviously turned down. Uh, Bruce Willis and the singer known as Sting. Now, my, for my, my thoughts on the film. Um, pretty much long story short, the only things I really uh, didn't think, I guess you can say hold up for current day stuff, is like some of the special effects were dated, but they were good for 1984. Um, there was a couple scenes I noticed that when we were watching it, when they shot it, they filmed it and then sped it up in post-production, which I thought was kind of like, why would you do that? I mean, I know that would probably help crunch down the runtime. Um, and obviously, the, the puppetry on the surgery scene looked really rough for current day aspects. But uh, I say the stop motion and the uh, moving around of the Terminator T-800 actually looked a lot better than that. Speaking of the self medic the self medicate scene, I actually thought that was kind of cool that it showed the Terminator actually self medicating itself and trying to repair its injuries. Uh, the Terminator vision, the red vision with the numbers and everything, I've always thought that was fucking cool. Um, the fact that the horror and action elements blended so well together for a film like this that it gives action and it was horror and it just blended well like a perfect like horror action smoothie. I really did enjoy the the future scenes with the scale models a lot because I, I like that some movies do that and it shows that you don't need to CGI everything. And obviously like Star the, Trek. The the soundtrack for me always it always gets me. It's one of the main things. Um I like the concept of Terminator. It's the time traveling, the futuristic machine takeover, the the war and whatnot they talk about in this film. I like the concept of it and everything, and I know time travel can get screwed up very easily when it comes to movies like this, but in this film, I think it's done very well because they don't do too much of the time traveling. That's all, like, in conversation. I will give this film a... I say for modern-day status, I think it would get a 9.5, which is still pretty good. I really do love this film a lot. I think Mike introduces himself to the Terminator series, <laughs> but but specifically this, this movie, nine and a half. If they made you want to okay, you want to say specifically this one, but okay. If they made another Terminator film and Tom Hardy was in it, My Michael would literally just implode. <laughs> but this is he'd be nine like one of them half. pipe bombs. Kaboom! This is a nine and a half for me because I it's it's fantastic film. I could probably watch it again and again and again and again. Any final thoughts before we close out this review? Kaka, uh... kaka. Traffic bark. Do -do 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 -do. This is Mike Check ninety five along with my usual cohorts who like to corny around with the final thoughts. No. You asked. <laughs> you asked what I was thinking in my head. That you was my final for... thought. And we are signing out. And hopefully, can you reset the future in your past? Boy! Whoa!